Chicks, and today I'm here to do another mini mashup. Um, I'm here to mash up all the books that were in my September TBR. I've already finished all of my TBR books, so woo, 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 woo. Um, now I just get to read books that I really, really, really want to read and just feel like picking up at the time. So I'm really glad I finished my TBR right away because it's awesome to do that. First thing that I finished in the month of September was The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson. I gave this book four stars. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's um. It's basically a paranormal Jack the Ripper YA book. Um, I had a couple subscribers recommend this to me when I read Project Kane because I said that I was really interested in reading more books that had a little bit of a serial killer element to it. And this one definitely did. It was really interesting. Um, the one thing that really hindered it for me was I didn't know it was a series. So the whole time I'm like, this is really leading up to something, but it's not really answering very much. And that's because it's a series. So please don't let that sway you from liking this book. I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more if I didn't realize that it was a series until the very end. Because I'm sitting there like, there's no way that this is it. Like, I thought I was a standalone. It's not. Don't worry, it's not. Four out of the books that I've read this month, though, this one is definitely my least favorite. Um, I've been reading really good month books, so that could definitely have something to do with it, but I just, I found it to be a little forgettable uh, compared to some of the other fantastic things I've been reading. The next thing that I finished was the Unbreakable by Cami Garcia. This is the first book in the Legion. It says right there it's going to be a series. I gave this book five stars. I definitely didn't expect to like this book as much as I did. Um, I was a big fan of the Beautiful Creature series, which Cami Garcia co-wrote with Margaret Stoll, but there was just always something lacking for me. Not with this book, okay? I read this thing in like two days. I sat down and I devoured this baby. It was so unlike anything I've ever read. And actually, no. It was a lot like Supernatural, the TV show, you guys know I love it, um, and then the Summoning series by Kelly Armstrong, um, not with all the crazy paranormal, all the, the multitude of paranormals, no, but it just had that kind of feel to it, and I definitely loved it. it I had a big worry that this was going to be a doppelganger to the Mortal Instruments, just because, you know, girl, her mother's missing or dies or whatever, and, and then two guys swoop in to save her from a demon. Sounds a little familiar. Let me just tell you that that is where the similarities end. Um, this book was nothing like I, anything I've ever read before, and I'm really, really liking the ghostly demon books lately, so if you guys know anything good, let me know in the doobly-doo. I think I said that last in my last mini mashup, just because I, prefer, I want to read some creepy books. It's about to be Halloween, yo. I need some creepiness in my life. Definitely, if you haven't read this book, what are you thinking? Like, why are you watching this video? Get off the computer. Go read something. Don't go outside. Just go read. The next thing that I read was Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I was also pleasantly surprised by this book. There were a lot of books that I picked this month for my TBR that I knew there was a big possibility of me enjoying, but at the same time I was like, this could really suck. This was not the case for Cinder. I loved it. In fact, if you watched my mini Amazon haul yesterday, I've actually already purchased Scarlet the sequel. I think it's like a companion sequel, not really full-on sequel sequel. So this is about a crazy world where there are cyborgs and people who live on the moon and they're like a separate race and then there's Prince Kai. Huh. The thing I love most about this book was Cinder herself. First of all there's not a huge description on what Cinder looks like so I really got to develop the physical appearance of Cinder based on her personality which really made me like her even more just because I really got to own the character in that way. Also she was like so bad but like you thought you could mess with Cinder? You thought she'd put up with your BS just because you're royalty or you're the boss? I don't think so. Cinder doesn't put up with anybody's bullcrap, and I love that about a main character. There are so many main characters that are just so shallow and so clingy and so annoying, and Cinder is not one of them. I loved her as a main character. The main thing in this book was really predictable for me, but the plot really thickens as you get along and as you lead up to it. There's a lot more to it than you think than you know, but it definitely was really predictable for me, which uh, kind of is disappointing when a book is predictable, but I really liked the way that it was going, so I cannot wait to read more about this series. 
The next thing that I read is Alice in Zombieland by Jean Showalter. This is by far my favorite of my September 2BR. This book was so good, it definitely, you can judge this book by its gorgeous cover because the contents inside are just as fantastic. I actually, I don't ever stay up late reading, okay? I have a two year old, I have to go to school and to work. I'm busy and I need my sleep desperately. I used to stay up to like 3 o'clock in the morning reading before I had kids. Mm -mm, not anymore. I read when I can and that is it. If sleep is going to come first, sleep is going to come first. Not when I was reading this. This book was so good that for the first time in a really long time, I think I might have done this with the Lux series as well, but I actually stayed up until like midnight reading this, which doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but trust me, for me, it is. I was exhausted. I'm still exhausted. I'm still recovering from reading this book. I actually couldn't sleep the night before I stayed up because I was thinking about this book. I was dreaming. I'm in, in the tone of this book. And that's what I want out of this book. That is what I need for it to be fantastic. So this book definitely got five stars. The big thing about this book, the main thing that turned me off from this was that I thought it was going to be Zombies in Wonderland. It's not. Don't worry. Unless you wanted that, then in that case, sorry, you're going to be disappointed. There are definitely several Easter eggs that Gina Showalter throws in there that makes it seem like Wonderland or makes it related to Alice in Wonderland, but this book is so much cooler. There was serious man candy thrown all over this book like it was a ho-dunk homecoming parade. And the characters in this book definitely are one of my favorites ever. Like, Kat needs to just walk her little tootsie butt right out of the book and come and be my best friend. I loved her. She was so funny. Always adding humor to the book. And it wasn't that annoying. Like, some authors try this and it's an annoying ditzy girl kind of thing. It wasn't that way with this. Kat was perfect. So, I loved it. The main thing that I liked about this book, and it kind of seemed to be a constant theme through my September TBR, was... Allie was totally bad, but, okay, she had some serious stuff going on. She had some serious mental issues from what was going on in her life. And she did some serious Stefan-like brooding throughout the entire novel. But let me just say, when time came down to it, Allie manned up. She took her lady balls and went and did what she had to do, and I love that. Another thing I really liked about this was the romance. The romantic character that Allie gets involved with is awesome. Because, yes, like any relationship, he does try to change her, but no. Allie wasn't having anything about that, and what I like about the romance is that's what made this particular person fall for Allie, was the fact that he couldn't change her and that she was so set in her ways and stubborn, and I just love that. I thought it was cute. So, definitely my favorite read. It had so much depth to it that I didn't expect, and I'm just so excited that I read this, and now I just cannot wait to get the second one in third one. Oh my goodness. So yeah, those are the fantastic things that I read in my September TBR. I'm so glad that I made the choices that I made because I could have picked some awful books and not even had a chance to experience these yet. And I know I'm a little bit behind on the bandwagon with these. Some of these books have been out for a while and like I said, the second and even third are out in some situations. But you know what? I don't care. These are fantastic. And if you haven't read them yet, get out of the rock that I was under and go read them because they're all good. I am Jessica with Chapter Ticks. Um, this is my September TBR wrap up, and I'm going to be doing another wrap up with what I read later. I'm definitely reading, finishing the Lux series this month now because I have the fourth and the fifth one, so I'll probably be doing a series because I bought the fourth and the fifth one, so now I have the entire series to read, and I'm almost finished with Origin, so I'm going to be finishing Opposition really soon too. So let me know if you guys would like to see an in-depth series review slash discussion kind of thing and what you would like to know about it and stuff like that. And then I'm also going to be reading some of the things that I got in my haul yesterday. So I will have the time, hopefully I'll have time to read a bunch and have another mashup ready before the end of the month. So I am Jessica with Chapter 6. I hope you guys enjoyed the mini mashup. Um, let me know what you thought below.